going to discuss a generator here that's made with a, a circular coil of wire, 325 turns. The diameter is given 9 centimeters. Uh, somehow, somebody creates an external magnetic field that this coil spins in. So sometimes the magnetic field will uh, be perpendicular to the plane of the area. Other times the magnetic field will just graze across the area. So there will be a changing magnetic flux and there will be an EMF then in between the ends of the uh, the wires of the, the, the coil. And we want uh, 1.5 volts. We want 1.5 volts to be our uh, uh, EMF. So how do we go about calculating the rotation speed of the coil in RPMs? Well, we're given that the, the max EMF is 1.5 volts. So in your book, you probably will locate this uh, formula. The EMF max is equal to the number of turns of wire, the magnetic field, the area, and the rotation speed uh, in radians per second. So you can see there's going to be a conversion. So this is the maximum EMF. This is not the EMF at all times. It's not a constant uh, EMF. I'll comment on that later. But we've got the numbers. Let's forge ahead. 1.5 volts, 325 turns of wire, 4.6 times 10 to the minus 2 teslas. The area is a circle, so pi r squared. The diameter is 9 centimeters. The radius is 4.5 centimeters. But we need this in meters, not centimeters. So a little switch there and then the omega. But 4.5 centimeters becomes 0.045 meters. Don't forget the conversion. You need standard metric units along here. So solving this for omega should come up with 15.77. Again, that's radians per second. Those are the standard units. We want RPM. So a little conversion going on here. How do I get rid of radians and bring in a revolution? Well, one revolution, a full rotation, is 2 pi radians. And then I want minutes per minute rather than per second. So to cancel off seconds, 60 seconds would go in the numerator and one minute in the denominator. And if you do that, you find 151 rounding RPM. 151 RPMs. So that's your uh, uh, rotation rate in RPMs. Um, let's uh, go on down here. How could we redesign this uh, generator so we get more than 1.5 volts at a maximum. Well, this uh, EMF is generated because of changing magnetic flux. If I would, I'll put it down here. The EMF basically is Faraday's law and not the uh, calculus form, but just a uh, easy to understand form the number of turns of wire we have and then the change in the magnetic flux in each coil uh, divided by the length of time to make that change occur so it's basically the change of magnetic flux so uh, those factors are up here if there are more turns of wire there's going to be a bigger EMF this number down here would be bigger if n is larger so that's one thing we could do we could make the number of turns larger in this changing magnetic flux, flux is, I'll use the space, flux is magnetic field times area times cosine of theta uh, with the area vector and the magnetic field vector have an angle theta between them. So in order to get a bigger change of flux, we need bigger flux. Our flux is going from a maximum down to zero to a negative value as the coil rotates because the theta cycles through from 0 to 360 degrees. So the cosine factor changes from you know, 1 to 0 to minus 1, back to 0 to 1, and so forth. So if the flux number is bigger, the change of flux will be bigger. So the magnetic field, uh, if that external magnetic field was larger, we'll get a bigger EMF. And you can obviously see, if we use bigger coil of wire, 
that would give us a bigger flux and we get a bigger change of flux as the uh, coil rotates. And then the last thing would be to get a bigger rate of change of the theta and that's the omega in the equation. So uh, force four factors is not too surprising. Um, if we make these numbers bigger, they're all multiplied, that would give us a bigger EMF. But this tells you why. It deals with the flux, really, and the change of flux. Uh, last concept question, would you recommend using this generator to recharge your 1.5 uh, volt DC battery? And the answer is no. We've calculated the maximum flux. At any time, the flux is equal to this maximum flux multiplied by a factor of sine omega t, and there's a phase angle in here. I'm not going to add that in. But uh, the EMF is variable based on the sine function. So uh, sometimes it'll be plus 1.5. Other times it'll be 0. Other times it'll be minus 1.5, and you discharge the battery. So no, this would not be a, a good situation to use. The EMF in terms of a, uh, making a graph here, uh, plus and minus, this EMF changes as the uh, angle, omega t, as an angle changes. So not a good choice for DC current. They have to do it a different way. And there are other ways people, of course, have figured that out. Uh, but this is a basic AC generator. Spin a coil of wire in a magnetic field. Uh, the number of turns, the magnetic field strength, the size of the coil, and the omega all contribute to giving a certain e maximum EMF. So keep practicing with that and ask your instructor some questions.